As homeowners age, the thought of selling to either downsize or move into assisted living can be super daunting for both the homeowner and their family. But here are seven options you can explore. Depending upon your health and what you need, there are several options for you as your age and Florida Realtors put together a really detailed list. Number one is aging in place. If you're in good health, this allows you to remain in your home. You don't have to move, and if your home is paid off, this could be a cheaper option. The downside is there's more upkeep on a property potentially, and there's not medical care on site. Number two is house sharing. This one was new to me, but I immediately thought of the Golden Girls. Imagine having a roommate who not only keeps you company, but is there if needs arise. The downside is you really have to vet who you're gonna have moving in with you. And depending upon where you currently live, you may have to make some property upgrades. But it's a great hybrid for aging in place because then you're not alone, and it also may help offset some costs. Number three is moving in with kids. Multi-generational housing has gained a lot of popularity in recent years. You can have a guest house or a potential ADU, accessory dwelling unit, or if your child's house is big enough, you may be able to just live right there in the house. It saves on costs and it can create some really meaningful time for you and your family. But the downside is it could require your child to make some renovations to their home for accessibility. And if you're needing more medical care, that could potentially be a burden on your family. Number four, independent living communities. This is a great option for seniors that want to live in a community with people who are of a similar age and one that offers amenities. These resort-like communities offer classes, events, pools, and activities. But they do tend to be quite expensive and they do not have medical care on site. Number five is assisted living. These communities offer a place for a senior to age with people their own age, but they provide more care for things like bathing or medications. The downside is it's not 24 seven care like you'd find in a nursing home. Number six is subsidized housing. This one is a little trickier to navigate because there is a lot of paperwork. According to the article, the requirements differ by area. So seniors and their families should check with their local public housing agency or ask a HUD housing counselor for guidance. HUD also offers a Section 202 Supportive Housing for the Elderly program, which helps place seniors in affordable housing that meets their physical needs. Alternatively, seniors can also rent traditional units, offsetting their cost with HUD's Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program, or the Low Income Housing Tax Credit Program. While these financially can be some really viable option, the downside is it can be very time consuming to apply with a lot of paperwork, and sometimes it takes a while before you're placed into housing. Number seven, life plan communities. These are also referred to as continuing care retirement communities, or CCRCs. And these provide a tiered system for increasing your level of care as you age and your needs change. The biggest downside to this is that the costs are steep. According to the National Investment Center for Seniors Housing and Care, the average monthly rental fee in the first quarter of 2023 ranged from $3,450 all the way to over $7,000. The point is, regardless of your age, your medical needs and your finances, there are several different options that you can explore as you begin to age and consider what's next for your living situation. But one of the next steps that to me is one of the most vital is making sure that you have all of your affairs in order. The power of having a will can make all the difference in the world for both you and your family once you're gone. I'm Lindsay Johnson, your resource for all things real estate. See you next time.